My name is Mike Fitzgibbon. We're here at Lockmore Castle uh, outside Temple Moor, County Tipperary. We're taking water samples from the, the shore sampling program. And we've taken our first sample here. Uh, we've, just, we've just filtered uh, three samples from the river. So I got involved in this uh, because I would have had general interest in environmental issues. And uh, I know from talking to people that there was an awful lot more life in the shore, uh, the shore river catchment area in the river itself uh, previously. So it'd just be interesting to know what, uh, what species are left there and uh, what we can do to try and conserve those species if they, st if they still are alive in uh, the river area. It's, it's important to understand what's going on in our rivers, uh, you know, for future generations. You know, you talk to some of the older people around um, the Clamwell area where I'm from, and they, 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 they'd reminisce about times when there was a lot more life in the river. And, you know, I'd like to be able to pass that on to my children, that there was life in the river, that it's not just a dead body of water flowing through. So it's good to try and understand what's going on and see what you can do to try and protect it. I've kind of done some background reading in, in environmental DNA analysis and you know it's an interesting area most people have a, you know a vague interest in DNA and understanding of all that kind of stuff so I've learned, learned a bit about DNA analysis from it yeah and we're moving on to the middle of Templemore town now we're going to take some samples from the river there. Paddy Kiley and I am a citizen scientist and today we've been doing eDNA testing for the sea lamprey, freshwater pearl mussels and crayfish. I've always had an interest in the environment and uh, see how we can live together, how the trees, the plants, everything that's living can work together to have a better environment and without, I give an example like without the bees we can't live and survive. Today we covered six areas and we did three samples on each river and that will tell us the migration routes, how much um, of these species are in the river, what can be done in the future with the rivers and we'll have the fi final say. And without these species in the river, what other species may not be able to live if they're gone. So we need to learn together how we can live together and be in unison. I'm Paul Vallely, this is my wife Lorna. And we're involved in a, a rather exciting and extremely worthwhile project, which is Citizens for Scientists, as Scientist Citizens. And it's involving the DNA testing to determine the presence of three endangered species. We lived on a sheep property in Australia with 3,000 acres and lots of sheep. So we're sort of used to being outside. When you live outside and you're exposed to the elements and everything around you, you really get an appreciation of, of nature and of ecology and how important these systems are in the world we live in. So I guess that's, that's probably, and, and obviously here we're in a, a lovely environment, we want to keep it that way as much as possible. Plus a healthy river, you've got fish, you've got birds, it's just that whole ecological framework that we really need. And Ireland particularly, they're in trouble with lots of species, so we just thought this is a great way of getting involved and um, very satisfying to do it and be part of something like this. When you've, you've been living on the land, you do get a, a very strong appreciation of the importance of the balance of the ecology how important it is for sustainability, for the health of the planet. Because mm -hmm. both of us take a very strident view on this issue of balance of the ecology. Uh, we have the view that the loss of any one species takes us one step closer to the death of the planet. Now, that might sound melodramatic, but it's hard to argue why that's not the case. So when we're talking about the uh, looking for the, the presence of the rare species such as the white claw crayfish. I mean, it, it, it mightn't seem much to anyone, but, but a loss of any one of those species is something that should be a major concern to anyone. But as I said, the loss of any one species puts us one step closer to the death of the planet. We're at Kilnacast Bridge, which is near Kilmoyler, around the Banshe area of Tipperary. We're taking samples of water for analysis for pearl mussels, uh, sea lampreys and white clawed crayfish. 
for this very exciting citizen science environmental DNA study which is being hosted by Shorecan and it's funded by the company I work for, the South Tipperary Development Company, under the LEADER programme. So we're delighted to be involved in this. It's a really cutting edge piece of research that is really going to give us a very clear idea about the health of our waters and the health of the river shore, running from its many, many tributaries down to Carrick on shore where it starts to become a saline river. One of the key features of the LEADER programme is safeguarding our water resources and this project, which as we said was promoted by the Shorecan Environmental Group, is exactly the sort of benchmark research which is needed for us to then go on and develop new projects with communities right along, right along the shore in how they can work to help to develop and to conserve and to protect our rivers so as they can be a good habitat for uh, creatures such as the pearl mussel, the sea lamprey, the white clawed crayfish, etc. And this is why we as a company are very interested in this and this is why we as a company with leader funding are delighted to be supporting Shorecan. I suppose the main reason I'm involved in this project is we would have moved to Aherlow from Dublin about 30 years ago. And moving from an urban area to, the, to a very, very rural area. And obviously the River Aherlow is the heart of the Glen of Aherlow. So we'd be very proud of it. And when we first came, it was well known as a big trout river. It was well known as having a lot of pearl mussel in it. And now 30 years on, we know that there has been pollution. We know that there are issues with water quality right across the country. And it's just really interesting to be involved in a study like this and to get a chance of going from, I suppose, the gossip of somebody saying, ah, there's loads of fish in that river and somebody else saying, oh, I haven't seen a trout for ages. And we're going to get some really good data here on the health of the river. And as I say, the river is the lifeblood of the Glen. The Glen is a wonderful place, famed in song and story. And I'm just delighted to be able to play a little part by collecting some samples as a citizen scientist and contribute to that body of knowledge. And then we use that body of knowledge to look after our river because we need it and we need to mind it.